In this training video, we're going to show you how to fill out your call report. So you just got a new job or a new project, and you clicked on this button here, call report, and this is what would pop up when you're just starting to set up a brand new project. So first off, these are all normal things, obviously, date contacted, date of loss, date started, date completed, date invoiced, date paid, okay, and then we also have the project type. So we've got some drop downs here, which is nice. So all these you would program under programming. So if you had another industry you want to put in here, you, you certainly could. But for our case, we're going to call it mitigation because it's a mitigation job for you water restoration folks out there. Uh, point of loss, water heater. Uh, for the roofers, you might say the roof. But anyway, your category, if it applies to your industry. Class, uh, assigned to. Okay, you can program these under programming. You may want to say team one, team two. You might want to say Johnny. You might want to say Chris. It's just, you know, all this could be programmed to what you want. You may want to have warehouse in here, or you might want to have storage. Uh, let your mind make the choices here. You can assign it to whoever you want, and you would program, program that uh, earlier. And then team leaders, uh, you know, you might have uh, 100 different guys, or two guys, or just yourself. So we'll just say it was Chris, that easy. So just this section here alone is fantastic. Uh, okay, so this would be your project location. Contact name could actually be the owner, okay, like it is over here on this side, but the contact name may not be the owner. So in this case, let's say it is the owner, okay, Randy Smith, the address, the city, the state, the zip code, if it's a building and unit number, you'd put that in here as well. Cross streets if you want. Use these if you want or not. If it's an apartment, you'd put that there. Gate code. Uh, the contact email for the person that first contacted you, their email. Contact phone number and site phone. You may not use this, but we have lots of choices for you. Okay, so let's say that the contact name was the owner, and you want to bring this information over, the name and the address. You'd click on this checkbox here, and it would bring it over for you automatically. You don't have to fill this out again. But in the event that, let's say, it was their property manager and it was Randy Smith, but the owner's name is Jason Wilson, He's the owner insured, but this is the contact person that called on his behalf. Okay, so you don't have to check these off. If it's different, this is going to be a, the actually owner's name. Okay, and then also the billing address uh, would be different from, let's say, the contact's address. So you can either have them both the same by checking these off or have them different. That's why we have. Uh, project location, it starts off with contact name and this is owner insured. Okay, so that, that's how that works. And uh, so we went through all these. So city and state, again, zip code, building unit number if it's, it applies, the cell phone of the owner insured, home phone number, work phone. Uh, and then here we have another checkoff box like these up here. If you wanted I'm going to show you for demonstration purposes. If you wanted this email here to be the same, well, click, you're going to see this one change. Okay, it just brought it over. It's, it's so nice. And, uh, or start over again. If you have a PO on this job, purchase order, put it in here. Note, you may want to meet the owner at 7 a.m. and you want to remind yourself, you could certainly use that note box that's available for you. If it's going through insurance, this whole area is for insurance. And let's go over it. So your company name, in this case, is State Farm Insurance Company. It's their company phone number, 
claim number if you have one, policy number if you have one of those as well, deductible if you're going to use a deductible you'd put it in here. Uh, what's nice about this deductible if you are using it, it's going to automatically put this in uh, part of the total. Uh, it'll be subtracted from your total at the bottom of your estimate. So if, if it's a $10,000 uh, job and then you did fill in this thousand uh, dollar deductible it's going to say balance due of nine thousand because you already received a thousand right then and there claims phone number okay okay that's that's their phone number just for the claims department very important you don't want to call the insurance company's regular phone number you're wasting your time you want to go straight to the claims and you want to get paid I really like this function right here. This is the claims department email. There's a hundred jillion emails that you might want to have to look up and, oh, I can't remember what State Farm's email is or I have to go look at my little list that I, I did. Well, no longer. Once you're in programming, and that's another video, but you could program all of your favorite emails, okay? It could be personal people or property management company, whatever email you need that you might use a lot of. So if you made a mistake, uh, let's say, let's say here that uh, the email, okay, so for, in this case, okay, the email's not selected. So we're gonna select what we want, right? So being that it's a State Farm job, okay, oh, here's my State Farm. Boom, it's right there. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Okay, now agent's name. If you dealt with an agent, usually the agents, he's right at the insurance company uh, uh, building. You know, he's an agent. That's his work phone. That's his email. But in, in the event that you are meeting with an adjuster, usually like a field adjuster, now here's his information. Name, work phone number, email, another area, notes. You're going to meet, meet the adjuster use the back gate, use it or don't use that. And we have two sections here. You see HOA forward slash property management. So HOA is for this side and property management is for that side. If you're not using either of these, just leave them alone. But HOA name, Regency companies, for example, is for the HOA name, Homeowners Association. Contact name, work phone, cell phone, email, and then last but not least would be property management information, if it's appropriate. So there's your property management name, that's the contact name, and that is the work phone, and the cell phone, and the email. Uh, just for your information as well, these dates here are very, very important. The more you fill in, the better, because it does affect other forms that will help you along the way. These, uh, these input boxes, they affect other forms. They're, they're, it's a very powerful section right there. So very, very useful. The call report is, is chock full of information. This is worked very, very hard on this, and uh, this will really help you to keep things in order. To your success, and thank you for watching.